It was a real Texas chainsaw massacre this week. Largest sell-off of stocks since the financial crisis. So what kind of stocks can we safely start picking at in weakness? I like to look at companies in growth industries that should be relatively immune to the virus and that have recently had great numbers. Companies like Atlassian, the cloud-based collaboration software play that helps other software developers work together. This company, one of our cloud princesses, reported a blowout quarter last month. But in the last week or so, as stocks pulled back roughly 7% from its recent highs. On par. Atlassian's been a fabulous long-term performer, though, and sooner or later, I bet it bounces back. We've liked it for a long time. That doesn't mean it's going to bounce back immediately. Now, earlier this week, we had a real chance to speak to Mike Cannon Brooks, the co-founder and co-CEO of a company that does best remotely. I'm talking about Atlassian. Take a look. All right, Mike, this is a blowout quarter. I'm getting used to that, frankly, because you keep doing it. 37% 37% growth, 164,000 clients now. What are they doing with you that makes it so that you're more efficient than what they were using before? Um, great question, Jim, and thanks for the, for the nice words. Uh, look, I mean, we, we continue to solve uh, people's team collaboration needs. So business is increasingly about solving human problems, people mm-hmm. in workplaces solving incredibly complex problems together. Um, and across our family products, that's, that's fundamentally what we do is we help Businesses solve very complex people problems in terms of collaboration of projects, other things. The more of those problems they have, the more of our software they're, they're going to need. There's a great uh, presentation on your website by A&C Bank, the largest bank in there. And one of the themes is that you are power to the people. What power are you bringing to the people? Um, I mean, it, it's as I've said. I mean, they're uh, a, a, lo- a very large bank going through a high uh, degree of transformation as they try to become much more digital. Um, and they've put us at the center of their stack for transforming a, uh, you know, tens of thousands of employees and how they work in every, every department of the bank. It seems like when you go through, people say, well, hold it, that's, isn't that what Slack does? I say, no, they're not Slack. And those people say, well, isn't that what Excel does? And I think that you certainly are superior to that product. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Excel is very useful. It's a great product. Right. Um, I think Excel is a good example of a product that's been used for far too many things. Right? Right. You can use it to do anything. Right. Uh, we're building tailor-made products to map to processes and collaborative flows, workflows within organizations, which Excel wasn't, wasn't intended to do. Right. Right? If you're doing finance and accounting work, maybe, maybe stick with Excel. Um, yeah, people know Lululemon. Uh, and they probably were trying to figure out, okay, listen, I don't know A and Z, but Lulu uh, uses you. So sure. tell us how they do that. What do they use it for? Um, so they use for teams across their organization uh, through uh, the technology sides of the business, so software and IT in terms of building new technology, which powers even a, a clothing company like Lululemon is powered by technology at some level, um, and then and then cross-border collaboration in, in different departments in the in the business. If Visa does same cross-border. Yep, Visa uses us uh, globally in lots of different. Square, scenarios. which I think is one of the most technologically inclined companies on earth, and just reported a terrific quarter, has also decided to use you. Yes, I believe Square has been a customer since they had maybe 10 or 20 employees. And Adobe. Yep. So, I mean, why are sometimes I feel like you're the software company that, that people don't know. Now, is that because you're not promotional? And I know you're not, because even on your website, you're not promotional. You just, you just tell the facts. Or is it because you're, you're down under? Um, look, I think we're just pretty straight up with our customers, right? We spend most of our time trying to solve ever more uh, and increasingly complex and large problems right. for the customers. And we've always believed if we solve problems from them, they'll uh, tell a friend and they'll, they'll buy some more software the following year, and, and that will end up in a good outcome for, for us and the shareholders. Uh, and now, I figure that the people who could use the most technically inclined uh, could use anybody is NASA. Now, NASA is not obviously an Australian company. It's an American company, but NASA has chosen you. Yep. Yep. NASA, we have a famous a bit of an older story now, but the Mars Curiosity Every line of code went through our uh, applications, some of our applications at some point. So we've kind of helped in a very small way send things to Mars, which uh, was pretty cool in the early days of the company. Okay, Uh, one of the things that I like about you guys, candidly, is you are a 111 company. How did you become a 111 company? And tell people what that means. Uh, Sure. So uh, we uh, have had a foundation for an awful long time in terms of corporate social responsibility and specifically philanthropic contributing to communities around us. Mm-hmm. Um, with Salesforce um, a few years ago now, we formalized that into what's called the Pledge 1% Foundation. So we're an example company, uh, but anyone can join. And so as a company, we give 1% of profits 
uh, to the foundation. It gets 1% of employee time uh, and has 1% of equity in the business. So the uh, foundation's done, done really well as well. Are you uh, doing that at all to help the terrible fires that you had in Australia? Uh, I don't know if the Alassian Foundation has done anything specifically with fires. No, that's not true. No, we no? did. We did. We uh, we made a the Alassian Foundation made a one million dollar donation to the I fire I, support. I don't know. I, I I don't know, Mike. If people know how big it, it was down it there, it was uh, it was vast, very impactful for sure. And then you, uh, besides just Salesforce, also uh, with Amazon again, another company you use anybody they use you. Yes. Yep. We have a lot of lot of fantastic customers using us uh, to power their. Work management, the digital workflows as they uh, as they transform. Now, are you ever worried that uh, someone? You know, we always hear ServiceNow. They want to do workflow management. Are you worried that one day a, a ServiceNow, which now, by the way, has a, a Bill McDermott, who, who's quite a player, uh, is, is he going to come after Atlassian? Uh, Bill's a good guy. Uh, you know Bill well. too. All right. <laughs> um, look, we, we're we're in slightly different sides of the market. Um, we certainly. Uh, intersect a little bit in the IT space. We're increasingly uh, focused on that space and have some fantastic offerings there. We obviously have a vastly different business model than they do. Uh, So from the point of view of how we would be found by a company and a customer and how we would grow within that customer, it would be in a vastly different way from a a business model point of view, but also from a profitability and that returns to our shareholders. One last question. Most companies obviously are being hurt by coronavirus. Uh, If I want to work at home, I want my Zoom video, and I presume to be want my Atlassian. I want to be part of the team, T-A-M. You're a company that most likely in, of the tech world, but that might not be hurt by this terrible virus. Um, I mean, look, it's, it's obviously going to become a worldwide thing if it's not already, and we'll, we'll obviously see what, what happens. Um, for sure, from a customer point of view, our software allows people to work digitally, I would say. Mm-hmm. Now, if that's in a building or working from home, if you're using our applications, you have to change your work style. Um, so I think that's going to help us. Uh, from a business model point of view, um, our business model is very stable. We sell very large numbers of very small transactions. Right. Um, so historically, we've, we've had a very stable business model. Um, and, and from the point of view of a few people have asked about China, we, right. we, we have very small, right. like, right. no meaningful exposure to China in terms of the customer base. So look, we'll see what's happening. Most of our focus internally has been on employees and, and managing travel. We have a large global company and right. making sure that we don't have any employees in China. People are smart and we're following all the advice. Well, excellent. I know people talk too much about Zoom. I love Zoom, but maybe they should be thinking about Atlassian too after that remarkable quarter and the many years that yeah. you've had. Zoom's, really a, Zoom's a good partner of us. I knew they are. Zoom is a very good partner of yours. Okay, that's Mike Cannon Brooks, co-founder and co-CEO of Atlassian, and I've always loved their symbol, T-E-A-M, team. Thank you, sir. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.